Seems the day that knows this is our time now. Standing here in front of you, I know I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. You are everything I have always dreamed of and so much more. These past four years together have been amazing. I cannot imagine a life without you in it. This year has been stressful, to say the least, but you continue to be my rock. You have always had a way of making me laugh, even when I want to cry. You make me feel safe when I'm afraid, and you always lift me up when I'm feeling down. I know that with any marriage, we will face many challenges together. But I promise I will always fight for us and never give up on you. I promise to always love you in good times and bad, in sickness and health. To be faithful, honest, and loyal to you. I promise to listen to you and be patient with you. I will celebrate your success and support you through misfortune. I will strive to make you happy and continue to make you laugh. I promise you will never have to face this world alone, as I will always be by your side. <laughs> You're my other half, the love of my life, and I love you today, tomorrow, and every day for the rest of our lives. Devin, I can't even begin to tell you how much I love and adore you. It won't be long. <laughs> You are the sweetest and most caring person that I've ever met in my life. I know it may be a little weird, but I always told myself that one day when I find someone to spend the rest of my life with. I hope that she has some of the same qualities as my mother and grandparents, grandmothers. This year has brought some ups and downs by doing these to help us grow as a couple. I can't tell you how, I can't tell you enough how proud I am for growing in your career. <laughs> Taking a position as the IC unit at basically the worst time. <laughs> worst time ever with the raw fire. I know you were nervous and scared, but not once did you ever complain about the on the and doing your job. Is it? Even on your days off, you call the hospital to check in on your patients to show them how much you care. I'd be lying. I'd be lying to say that I woke up this morning so happy now and happy able now to be my wife. This is what I fly on. If it be, do not have something fuddling. <laughs> she, gave, she gave you her blessing to marry her dad. <laughs> I know it's hard for us not having our loved ones here who passed away, but I know they've been watching over us this whole time, so they gave us this beautiful day. Lastly, I can't wait to be in our life together, together now, and hopefully have some things in the near future. I just want to let you know that I promise to always love you and protect you, no matter what. I love you. I'm hard. <laughs> this adventure we will live on. Every day is a chance to discover.
taking a minute to thank my parents as well as Mr. and Mrs. Izzy for making this week such a special one for Dev and Matt and all of us here tonight. We were worried my dad wouldn't make it down the aisle so the night's already off to a great start. We didn't think he'd fall down the aisle <laughs> but it's okay. I may be biased but Devin and I truly have the greatest parents in the whole world. I think I speak for both Devin and I when I say thank you to the both of you for always being there to support us to love us unconditionally, and to be our biggest cheerleaders. The last few months have not been easy, but my parents always remain positive with smiles on their faces and will do whatever it takes to make sure we are both happy. As many of you know, Devin is our family's real life hero. She not only is one of the greatest nurses ever, but as you heard earlier from Matt, she became an ICU nurse just a few weeks before COVID hit our world. Commercials would pop up on the TV thanking essential workers or showing videos of doctors and nurses coming or leaving from work, and I would watch my parents get emotional. Not necessarily with sadness, as much as pride. Although they were both very worried about what was to come, about Devin getting sick, or what she was going to face each day, more than anything, they were really proud of her. I, too, have never been more proud to call Devin not only my sister, but my best friend. She has handled everything about the last six months with grace. 
She somehow continued to laugh and use her sense of humor to cheer us up when she was the one who needed cheering up. There's so much I could say about Devin and her character. She is kind, caring, genuine, and thoughtful. I can't imagine a patient having a better nurse than her, and I sure as hell can't imagine growing up with a better sister. I will say in front of all of you, Devin, although I was not always the nicest to you, I am sorry. In front of all these people, here's your apology. I love you with all my heart, and I can never express my gratitude for all you have done for me over the years. It's hard to realize or appreciate an amazing family until you are an adult. I've spent a lot of time over the last few years thanking God every day for my parents and Devin. Over the years, we have made so many memories together, and I know we are just getting started. My heart is so filled with joy and love tonight as we celebrate this amazing milestone in my little sister's life. However, as I drove down the shore last weekend, it hit me. We were no longer going to have the same last name. Needless to say, I sobbed the rest of the way down the shore. <laughs> it hit me hard. Although this is such a special day for my little sister and for all of us, it clearly brings lots of emotions. I also wanted to thank all the Izzies for welcoming not only Devin into their family with open arms, but for welcoming me as well. Whether I'm down the shore and the Izzies include me on their dinner reservations, or Dee Dee buys an article of clothing that she doesn't like, she passes it along to me. <laughs> They've always gone out of their way to make my sister and I feel like family. It's not always easy to gain in-laws, but I know Devin feels really lucky that she's gaining the Izzies as her family. And I know they are just as grateful to be gaining Devin. Mrs. Izzy said from day one that she knew Devin was the one. So apparently, apparently Noelle and I should have compared notes because there's quite a bit of Because <laughs> <laughs> that's why they say great minds think alike. That's right. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mike. And Matt and I have been friends since we met at Holy Cross in sixth grade. <laughs> Promise I will be keeping my remarks brief. Not only because I'm a lousy public speaker, but also because we've already kept Matt up well past his bedtime. I would like to begin by thanking Mr. and Mrs. Newton, as well as Mr. and Mrs. Izzy for having us all here tonight. I think they're deserving of a round of applause for making this night possible for all of us. So I was also there the night that Matt and Devin met. <laughs> I was living in Conshohocken at the time, and Conchie was having its annual St. Patrick's Day parade, which most of my friends were coming up for. The day started in the early afternoon, but I had to work that day, so I got there a few hours late. When I got to the Great American Pub, which is where everyone was, I immediately noticed two things. Number one, Based on my friend's motor skills, or lack thereof, <laughs> they had clearly been celebrating the holiday rather enthusiastically. <laughs> Number two, Matt was not with the group. He was off by himself talking with a girl. Now to be clear, one of these two observations was predictable, but it was not the latter. <laughs> So now I'm at the bar with my friends, and I'm trying to play catch up with Josh Jameson and Pints of Guinness, and the hours pass by. And there are Matt and Devin, both looking to me to be completely sober in the midst of all these drunk, stressed, and green, and they're talking to each other pretty much exclusively. More time passes by, and we decide to finish up the night at a bar around the corner called Southern Cross, and I think to myself, okay, I guess this is where the night ends for Matt and this girl. Well, maybe he'll get her number and ask her out. Instead, Devin ends up coming with us. <laughs> now, it's the point of the night when the crowd is beginning to thin, and I got a chance to talk to Devin a little bit more myself. My first impression of Devin was, this is obviously a very nice girl, and who knew you could meet a nice girl at a bar on a night when half the neighborhood can't see straight? <laughs> So we spent the rest of the night at that bar with Matt and Devin off to the side, continuing to talk. And I can see Devin both engaged in the conversation she's having with Matt, but also looking on with an expression of music <laughs> as me and my friends make fools of ourselves. <laughs> so that was at least my perspective of like Matt and Devin's relationship with Matt. I guess the reason I wanted to share this story was because as Matt's friend, I have to say, 
And hopefully, with it not, without it sounding too much like a cliche wedding speech compliment, because I mean it, that from very early on, there was a sense that Devin and Matt found a good thing. Devin, you are the real deal. <laughs> genuinely caring, genuinely friendly, and genuinely a good person. It also doesn't hurt that you're a nurse, because Matt has had more stomach bugs than any other person I've ever met. Matt, I could not have asked for a better friend. Over the past two years, I've watched you work hard at building your business with diligence and integrity. Your thoughtfulness, selflessness, and loyalty to the people that you love are just a few of the characteristics that make you such a great friend. And I know they are the same qualities that will make you a great husband and father. So with that being said, please raise your glasses and help me. Cheers, Matt and Devin. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Said, I should have taken some notes, but they pretty much talked about exactly what I want to talk about. So I'm just going to make fun of Matt for a few minutes. You see him dance out there? $200 a week. So I feel like a lot of us here have been to either a bachelor or a bachelorette party. With your significant others and friends that are there, you don't really talk much about it. What'd you do? We went to the golf course, we hit the lake, we got dinner. That's about it, there's no questions. You know what I'm going to break the rule? I'm going to talk about the bachelor party. You know why? My significant other didn't ask. Matt did. You know why? Because Matt was sleeping, like Mike said. He slept 75% of the week. That's nice sleep I ever got. Just slept like a baby. It was about 50%, but when he wasn't sleeping, he was making rules about sleep. We don't get any rules you can't sleep in. You see, Steve looks tired. I think we should wrap it up. When he wasn't making rules about sleeping, you know, he was doing his breaking mind and like stones. Oh, no mayo with my turkey and cheese sandwich? <laughs> Only two bags of Doritos? You know I love Doritos. <laughs> You got little ones? The muffins? I like the cupcakes. <laughs> My nose broke. No, but seriously, Matt and I have been friends for close to 30 years. Matt truly is the little sister that I never had. I have three sisters. Let me tell you what, they're a pain. That shows you how much he is. But we didn't fight about, you know, what clothing we were going to wear and how we couldn't match. Greg's that little sister. <laughs> Actually, when it comes to clothing, we're always on the same page. We used to go down to Seattle Avalon for the summer, and I'd be like, you want to need a new wardrobe for summer? I'm going to head over to Kohl's. <laughs> they got five shirts for $20. <laughs> I'm walking out of there, and the phone, I'm like, being a little secret. That's people don't know Kohl's got great deals. Hey, man, they got five shirts. Slash down 20 more percent. <laughs> we'd head to Seattle, we'd get a full wardrobe. $42 between the boats, so the boats got shit. No, we're bigger, we're bigger, we're bigger over soup and stuff. I mean, back to the shore, back when we were 18, 19, we used to go to Wildwood. Our favorite thing, we used to drive down the shore. We go to Wildwood, we had two groups of four. We'd get there, we'd look at houses, we'd have cheese steaks, we'd compare the houses. It was great. So you didn't always hit a home run with the houses. So one week, a couple of us went down there, and I was there, I actually drove, which I never did. <laughs> the next week we had to go back. It's the night before we got me, Bill, Mike, and Matt. Matt's going, all right, who's driving? I go, you're driving. He goes, you never drive. Yeah, you know what? I didn't drive. I never drove. You know why? Because I drove a crappy car. So, literally, I saw Rob flew up in it. It was a 94 Shelley Cavalier 2 door. The seatbelt crossed over. Like, you got the T-bone door open and you fly out. I just want to go to the So we had an audience about who was driving. And Matt, I'm going, Matt, you're driving. He's a nice SUV. He has air conditioning. He's beautiful. He's a man. You can see him. He's going, no, you're driving. You never drive. So Matt, I drove last week. He goes, I wasn't there. You drove. Bill and Mike are starting to get like an audience. Like, no kid. I'm like, no. I'm like, man, true or false? Did I drive last week? He got so many swat at <laughs> so Matt, uh, Mike and Bill broke away and broke it up. 
But for me and Matt, you know, we never had to talk. That was, that was silly. You know what he did the next day? He bought me a cheese steak. A cheese steak and cheese fries. It was squashed. <laughs> As we were growing up as kids, we'd either play with mini hockey or others at Daisy's house or my mom's house. And one thing was always constant. There was great snacks. There was Star Wars, Doritos, Dunkaroos. So you know what? Shame on me and Mike for not having the right snacks. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Mrs. Daisy. But when we were playing mini hockey, whether it was at my house with my brother, who was bigger than us, or over the Izzy's with Steve and Chris, who were O'Hara hockey players, we had Marty over there, junior hockey. Izzy was on the Hawks, and then who we had? We had B. I was like, oh, purple, red ducks. I was like, red ducks were good. I was playing Team Iceland every time. Now I used to check into the boards and come up with a new bruise. As we got a little bit older, the competition kept going, always competitive. We would play basketball one on one, and there used to be stakes. It'd be real windy down in the city. The stakes never had a lot of money. Cheese stakes. She says tasty treats, right? <laughs> Matt's actually the first one to introduce me to God. He's like, you gotta play. You gotta play. I got a bag for you. I got all the balls we could have because at the time his grandfather was working at the uh, driving range. Bag balls will be fine. I shot 42 over. How was it like, even possible? The end of the day, we had zero balls left, a lot of laughs, and some cheese steaks. <laughs> So I'll wrap it up with this. Yesterday was Matt's last day as a single man, whatever that means. We went out to play Springfield. And there's Augusta-like conditions out there, man. We played bad to be mad. We tried to make a reservation after. So it didn't happen. So what did we do? We went back to Matt's house. We laughed. And we got cheese sticks. <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say is, for us, for our group of friends, our little family, some things don't change. We like playing. We're competitive, and we're always going to eat cheese sticks. <laughs> Devin, I guess I couldn't be more excited for today. You look absolutely gorgeous in this beautiful venue. As you guys. I can't wait to watch you guys grow together, come into our little family, to laugh. I can't wait to watch you guys laugh together. So with that, I'd just like to cheers the new Mr. and Mrs. Izzy. Cheers! Cheers! Cheers. 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 Cheers.